All right, so now we're going to take a look at the 3D BIOS on the Gigabyte uh, X79 UD3. One of the things we talked about in our coverage of the UD5 was that we had an issue with the 3D BIOS, uh, especially the F7, where if we used a mouse that was attached to our KVM, we had nothing but up and down movement. This is our uh, G5 Logitech, and no matter what we do, all you get is up and down. Now, we also plugged in a Spawn uh, uh, CM Storm Zornet, actually, and that's plugged directly into the USB. You can see you can move around, so just something to keep in mind. If you are going to use a KVM, it uh, has the potential for limiting your mobility to just uh, up and down. You're not going to get any kind of vertical movement um, through this. But uh, going back, again, you can rotate the board to a different angle. That way you can see and uh, you know get some of the other items on the board a little bit quicker. Each one of these is just going to have a sort of a fast entry and get to it real quick. Again, we note that unless you want to move this out of the way, your side panel here is just, it's not that great and it's not that functional. And as soon as you close any of these out, it goes away. So if you're using this, uh, one of the things we'd like to see Gigabyte do is allow you to put that up there because it's great to get some quick information, but you do have to move this out of the way, which, you know, of course, limits, limits the functionality of each of these windows that pops up. So moving on, again, you can see you have integrated device control, your expansion slots, your uh, uh, south bridge, or your MCP now, you don't actually have a south bridge. You can look at your drive control features, memory, CPU, all of that. But you can also go back and take a look at this in more of a traditional setting, <clears throat> which is your uh, UEFI BIOS. And it's still going to look a lot like um, the original BIOS. And again, you still have the same problem here with uh, the KVM attached mouse. But we'll go ahead and we'll use our, uh, our Zornet and we'll take a look at everything here. The, uh, the BIOS does, as you can see, as we move through, there's a little bit of a lag, not much if you can hit right directly on it. But uh, other than that, it does push you through there. So we'll start uh, here at the top and we'll take a look at the uh, MIT status. It's, uh, MIT stands for Motherboard Intelligent Tweaker. That's a leftover from the original uh, BIOS. You can see here, this is going to give you a quick at a glance view of everything you've got going on. It's a really nice function. You can see what your different cores are doing, what their actual frequency is, and uh, you know, just like I said, uh, just a quick glance, and you see everything you want there. All right, under advanced frequency, here's where you're going to do all of your basic CPU overclocking. You can hit your advanced CPU features very quickly here to enable, disable anything that you need to get the most out of your CPU. So, right now, this is uh, coming off the back end of our overclock. We have a 1.25 uh, base clock uh, ratio, which is going to give us 125 megahertz uh, B clock. And then we're running a 36 multiplier, gets us up to a 4.5 gigahertz overclock. Anything over that, we did try and kick it up a little bit further, and we ran into different stability issues that we were just not able to clear out within the time frame that we had. Our memory is at 1,666 megahertz. You know, nothing fancy there. You just all of these are, uh, you know, pretty much you click on them and you can open them up, or you can do page up and page down to move through those settings, uh, you know, if you want to use the keyboard. Advanced memory settings, <clears throat> pretty much going to have everything that you need here. You can change your timings if you want, quick, expert, expert's going to give you the listing of everything. So you'll be able to change all these different timings, um, and those are going to be all down here. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. And you'll be able to see each one of those timings underneath here. So each one of these timings, you just get the, you're able to go through and pretty much look over anything that you need to. Uh, performance enhanced. This is going to be turbo. If you're kicking it up very fast, you want to push this uh, to let's say you know 2,000 megahertz. You want to drop this down to normal. If you're running at a lower speed, you can run it on your extreme. Just kind of depends on what you want to do for stability. Your voltage controls. You have your 3D power control. This is. Uh, going to give you the options of tuning the way the voltage regulation and the power regulation actually operates on here. You can change the frequency that this runs at, change your load line calibration, all of that including changing the uh, current protection, increasing it so that you can add more voltage into this to allow the processor to run faster. We have everything here set at auto. We didn't get too deep into changing these around and we found that when we did, even our base overclock that we're, we were able to get to normally didn't want to operate correctly. So we'll push down here. You can see you can even change your thermal profile and the frequency that the, uh, the controllers run at, the switch rate frequency. So this is nice. can give you a little bit of extra headroom when you're trying to push for that extra, you know, 100, 200 megahertz for an overclock. 
Uh, PC health status, pretty much self-explanatory. It's going to tell you your voltages, your temperatures, all of that. You can set your different uh, fan failure and all of those other options are down here. And we'll scroll down. Most of these are going to be disabled just because we're, uh, we're overclocking and also we have a, a, our Epic 180 water cooler on it. And of course you have some miscellaneous settings down here. You can see every now and then it just doesn't want to, to hit nothing on the miscellaneous settings so it's empty. Um, over here, system. Just going to give you the basic information about the system as usual. BIOS features. These are what used to be called your advanced features, but it's pretty much just your basic features that for functionality. You can turn on your virtualization technology, the uh, I.O., your virtualization technology for drives, uh, your you know, ISOC, all of this. Set up a password if you want. You can also change your boot options, your hard drive boot, um, drive priorities. It's all going to be here. Peripherals. It's exactly what it says. Um, it's interesting that they mentioned Super IO. The Super IO controller is actually a throwback from way back, like the Super Socket 7 days, when you actually had, uh, and before uh, the old 486s, when you had a Super IO controller that you put in that gave you your options for everything else. And you had to program these in addition to programming the board. It's kind of interesting to see that uh, here, though. Uh, your Marvel ATA controller, this is uh, your SATA uh, 3.0 controller and the different ports that are running on it. The, those are actually running off of the, uh, the GSAT is actually what runs off of this. So you've got a lot of different options here. Power management, pretty much the typical things. Uh, of course you have save and exit. You can also uh, run your Q flash directly from here, which is nice. Uh, Gigabyte's had that for quite a while. So it's not like that's anything new. It's just a nice feature. It's up here in the corner. You also have some quick uh, options with your F function keys. You can do previous values, optimize, Q flash, system information. You just hit those and it's going to pop it up very quickly on your screen. Uh, you have a screen print option, which we like. We've used that before um, on ASUS systems, and now you can see that filtering over into Gigabyte and MSI. We're going to have the option of just dropping in a USB key as long as it's formatted FAT32 and save a bitmap. Again, the bitmap uh, images are going to be pretty large. So you'll want to convert those to something else if you plan on sending those uh, around the Internet or even if you want to post them up on a bulletin board or something like that. So that covers everything we've got here. Uh, very quickly going through the ASUS uh, UEFI, the 3D BIOS on the uh, X79 UD3. And again, you know, we found that uh, you know, just be careful of the KVM mouse and make sure you're if you're using a USB mouse. It's going to work in here. We didn't see anything with uh, previous BIOSes. We didn't encounter this issue until the F7 BIOS. However, we do recommend that you upgrade your uh, boards to the F7 BIOS once you get them, just to make sure that there's no flaky voltage uh, information in the system, especially under the 3D power. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this portion of it up. Normally, we would take the board off the, the bench and we'd go ahead and talk to you about the board and its features and our conclusion. However, we're going to be leaving this one up as we're going to get directly into some Windows 8 gaming using this board and both NVIDIA cards as well as an ASUS uh, 5870 card just to see what Windows 8 can do for us in gaming. So once we get everything wrapped up, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get this posted up and we'll tell you what we find with the rest of our performance.